the best way to experience VR is really to put on the headset because you can't convey the immersion with a 2D video. You can't just, you can't explain VR actually. You have to experience it yourself. You are in there. You are in the moment. Everything around it, audio, gameplay, um, uh, the art, everything is there to put you to that moment. We did try a number of things that were making us really, really sick. Well, we were doing everything wrong, you know? You didn't know. There wasn't a simple way to do it. You know, you had to try it and go, oh, geez, that made me sick. Oh, that made me even more sick. The biggest one was to try to, for example, scale the movement of the head. We thought, okay, I look up, say, 10 degrees, but then in the game it's as if I'm looking up 20 or 30 degrees. That was terrible. We actually really have to have to think about how we move the player and when we move the player. So should we move the player while he's reaching for a grip or once he gripped the grip? It all has to do with giving the player the impression that he's really there. The ambience has to be three-dimensional. When you turn around, you want to hear that waterfall turning around exactly from that position. You want to hear that bat flying around and behind you, you want to hear it actually from behind you and not guessing, oh, was it behind you or not? You want to know it, you want to know it, because um, if you don't, that breaks the immersion. One of the challenges that we faced when we were um, building the game was that traditional game development approaches, some of them didn't work, such as UI. Normally in games, the UI is a 2D panel on top of the world. And in VR, it is the world. For example, the chalk indicator in the game. Normally this would be 2D interface, uh, and in our case, it's actually part of the player's hands. With the grips, for us, uh, the biggest challenge was actually that they all had to be hand sculpted into the rock surface. It's something you'd naturally only do um, once if you know what where the grip is perfectly but in game design often grip positions have to change during production and that means a lot of rework but we couldn't do it any other way we tried all kinds of kinds of modular setups but nothing was um, has this quality to it as if you hand sculpted it and you really needed that quality because sometimes when you climb the rock surface is all you see you will get a lot of vertical moments and in VR this is especially exciting and I was falling, 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 but I managed to grab to the very bit of it, you know, it was like, wow. and then you felt like, wow, like a Superman somehow, like a life-threatening moment, but it was super awesome. And the funny thing is you hear the, the crack, like, and then you feel like, oh, okay, it's going to break, I have to move, and if you miss that second, or if you're bad in timing, you will fall. And that adds a lot of frustration, so you have to climb really, really fast. If you have fear of heights, you're gonna maybe have a trouble time. <laughs> But with the, I think that's that's an interesting part. Like a lot of other VR games, they stay grounded or cockpit or third person sitting in the corner. But we are first person and we are very high up. I believe hardcore gamers will approach the game more like a race, uh, and I believe that casual gamers will approach the game more like an exploration. Let me take my time. It's a zen moment. And I think that's part of the magic of what the climb is, is the fact that you can try it 10 different ways and you know, and you might be trying to do it with the least amount of grips or you might be trying to do it as fast as possible. It just depends on how you want to play the game. It's an intense experience. It's uh, people, um, people love it because of that. Achieved with CryEngine.